Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, hello everyone, uh, we will continue with our uh, uh, lecture series on this course so, optimal control guidance and estimation. So, up to last lecture we have talked uh, estimation and then integrated design approaches things like that lot of advanced topics uh, what is happening in the in the research community in the, at the moment actually. But then again in this next couple of lectures uh, we will go back to the classical uh, legacy material sort of thing where we talk about various conceptual things in the textbook level basically. Uh, one, uh, one thing that uh, comes to mind is uh, LQG design okay, which is a linear quadratic Gaussian design. I have talked a little bit on that uh, before okay, but a little more uh, systematically we will talk along with a with an example from a textbook also basically. Okay. And then we will also study something like neighboring optimal control okay, which uh, if you given a optimal path already then how do you find out uh, another optimal path which is close to that actually. Okay. So, that is neighboring optimal control and then uh, along with that uh, sufficiency condition as well okay. and sufficiency conditions are classified in various categories like uh, weak sense, strong sense things like that. Uh, we will just summarize the results in the weak sense strong, and strong sense will lead uh, this uh, weak even weak sense if you really want to understand uh, the details of this design uh, I mean sorry details of the analysis then it talks a lot of uh, mathematical tools and all that. So, we will try to avoid but rather try to understand the summary of uh, what are the condition what the condition says actually. Okay. So, this is this uh, materials are taken from these books uh, first thing is a classical book uh, as I told uh, in my first lecture this is one book which is uh, heavily referred in, in a lot of papers actually okay. probably the most referred uh, book ever in uh, in control theory entire control theory basically okay. that is my guess. And some topics are also derived from Anderson and Moore uh, especially for linear quadratic methods these are a very rigorous book it talks a lot of uh, this time domain as well as frequency domain analysis and all that. So, if somebody is interested you can read that. Also a little bit uh, concept can be seen in uh, in uh, optimal control estimation from Stengel okay. and also one uh, small concept uh, some example problem that I will talk I have taken from Frank Lewis book and also I have not uh, included that uh, but you can see that same thing in, in other books as well actually. Yeah. Anyway, so this first thing is uh, this concept uh, robust control design through LQG concept actually okay, linear quadratic Gaussian concept. So, this is uh, very simple ok. Uh, what we know in uh, in plant operation is we have a controller and we have output of various sensors and all and we are so far we have been assuming that everything is available. So, we directly feed it actually ok. So, we sort of uh, kind of bypass this uh, state estimation thing and then directly feed it to the controller and operate. Now, the question is ok outputs are noisy and also plant can have some uh, some process noise and all that. Now, the whole idea is how do we tolerate it or how do we design uh, more and more robust control and all that is that way. So, the one idea that comes to mind is ok why do not you put an estimation in the loop ok. You have a state feedback controller that means control requires state information anyway, but in case of uh, instead of directly measuring all the states or or whatever doing some algebraic manipulation from the output and feeding it back to all the states which are noise anyway, why do not you put an estimation in the loop which will not only filter out the output noises or sensor noises will also try to kind of filter out the plant noises ok. So, then uh, you will feed that information to the controller and get uh, a much better performance actually. So, that is uh, that is the whole idea of uh, how a controller is typically synthesized in practice. And this uh, even if you think that ok I do not need an I need to kind of design an estimation and things like the estimator. Then it turns out that the sensors that you use ok typically they have their built in estimators basically. The sensor output uh, what you are getting in uh, let us say inertial navigation system and uh, things like that, they are uh, they themselves have uh, filter filters inside the instrumentation package basically. So, we do not we do not see that explicitly and we do not have to really design it as, as long as you are concentrating on control part of it, 
but uh, they are also part of the problem part of the plant in general basically part of the overall system basically okay so without state estimation in the loop uh, probably the entire thing remains uh, open loop actually in a way in other words if you really don't have any state estimation you do you want to get away with that then uh, it may not work also okay so this is the as good uh, as important as that what i mean actually okay so if you really want to have a complete system is either you have a built in estimator which you typically don't see or explicitly you have to design an estimator and then put it back into the controller actually okay so that is how it will operate all right so the philosophy of this lqg design is uh, very simple in in, in fact uh, it has two components one is lq controller typically synthesized through lqr design and there is lq estimator typically designed through kolmo filter and here we talk on linear systems only basically okay. so lq controller and lq estimator are uh, i mean everything actually okay so and essentially when you i mean there are various extensions of lqr as we we did know before including some tracking problem in some like so this essentially gives us some sort of a good platform to have some uh, 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 i mean fairly good uh, robust control design in the loop sort of thing actually okay so bottom line is so the controller uh, is designed uh, using lqr synthesis the estimator is used i mean designed using kalman filter synthesis actually so these two together and then you have got this design as called lqg essentially lot of other variations and all you will find in the book but uh, many books and different different things but essentially this is the key component actually okay. so just to summarize the lqr design uh, we have studied that extensively before in a few lectures so uh, i mean you can see all those things if you have forgotten or, or you want to revise then the performance index uh, is like this and if nobody tells us anything we assume that tf is infinity so that means the cost function is quadratic in state and quadratic in control and final time is infinity and q is positive semi definite where r is positive definite okay and the system dynamics is linear x dot is x plus vu and the boundary condition is uh, is initial condition since it is known final condition sense okay lambda f has to go to 0 and also if it is infinity time because of quadratic cost function and all these conditions will guarantee that xf will go to 0 st st goes to infinity actually okay all right so this is the problem okay and what is the solution we have done the solution already that control can be computed this way essentially some sort of a gain matrix k times x with a negative sign u equal to minus kx where k is computed as r inverse v transpose p r is already come i mean r and q are design parameters tuning parameters we already have it so r inverse is we already have b is the system dynamics matrix so we already have from there okay what you don't have is p but p is computed as a solution of the ricard equation which is something like this okay p a plus a transpose p minus p v r inverse v transpose p plus q equal to 0 okay so essentially you compute you solve this uh, ricard equation compute the p then compute the gain matrix that we are in must be transpose p and you have a controller structure ready the whole problem here is uh, this x is not ready your k is ready but x is not ready or even if it is ready it is noisy so what do you do about that okay so then this is this uh, idea comes to mind uh, very um, this uh, technique comes to comes to us very handy that we also know well we we have a way to kind of reject noise now we know kernel filter design and which can tolerate both process noise as well as uh, sensor noise so why not using that okay so the kernel filter design summary in in continuous time domain other things are uh, also there uh, as a choice basically so in continuous time domain what you say is, uh, is uh, x dot is x plus not only x plus b u but you also have a z w component and uh, the output is not only cx but there is a v component also so x dot is that way and y is that way so these are assumed to be white noise and q is expected value of w w transpose process noise covariance and r is expected value of v v transpose which is sensor noise covariance okay so q and r are typically process and sensor noise covariances r is known from experiments and all that uh, with respect to a particular sensor set that you are using and q is uh, typically a tuning parameter where uh, the whole idea is uh, to assume some sort of a larger q with in the sense it also tolerates the modeling inaccuracy on that whatever is inaccurate in the modeling part it will come and and sit as a noise basically okay. so these are all uh, i mean we discussed before in detail okay. so we have this and then we talk about estimating the state 
using this sensor or output information actually. How do you do that? You initialize, you initialize some uh, some state uh, to some values uh, and then solve the Riccati, I mean the filter Riccati equation as a filter algebraic Riccati equation which is slightly different from what we see in the control Riccati equation. Okay. This is the one. Once you solve that your P matrix will be ready and then gain Ke can be computed as PC transpose R inverse actually. Okay. And detailed derivation and all we have all already done much I mean so one of the previous lectures actually. So, we compute the gain that way and once you compute the gain we have an observer dynamics okay. and this observer dynamics talks about a little bit innovation component which is uh, actual output minus predicted output and then you multiply that with Ke and then operate this filter with this initial condition. Um, if you I may mean, operate this observer dynamics with this initial condition and the whole idea is uh, as time goes that means as time evolves your x set will, uh, will converge to real x actually. Okay, so that means uh, estimation is guaranteed to work as far as it is as, as long as it's a linear uh, equation by the way. So the LKZ design talks about fusing these two. Okay, it talks about uh, design and deterministic LQR control. Okay, forget everything about estimation design at this point of time. Don't worry about it at all actually. Okay. So, it assumes the perfect knowledge of the state and uh, it assumes that plot is not affected by processor, processor I mean process and sensor noise, you do not worry about that at all actually. Then you design a kernel filter in parallel and do not worry about how this control is uh, is designed. This control gain how it, is, how it has come and all that do not worry about that at all in, the, in estimation design problem. Okay. You design that and find out x height from, from this part of it and k from that part of it and then fuse them together as u equal to minus k x hat now is not k x is k x hat. So, this design principle is, is called LQZ and the justification of LQZ design comes from the fact that uh, there is a big a big good theorem separation principle. Okay. So, these two things can be done separately and it does not affect the overall system. All these things by the way remember that these are all valid only for linear systems actually. Okay. The separation principle which is so nice. Uh, it is it does not hold good in linear systems in general. Nobody has proved that we in in a way. In other words, it is still an open problem. And some of you, if you really want to do some some research in this, probably you pick up a nonlinear control design, uh, various designs of course, and then also pick up something like a filtering design, either a E cap, U cap, uh, I mean H, uh, H infinity filter or, or particle filter, whatever it is. You, you pick up a particular nonlinear filter. And you did pick up a particular nonlinear controller and then try to see whether the separation principle is there or not. If you can you can prove that, I mean, it, it uh, I mean, uh, the comment is it works in general. Okay, we have seen that in uh, previous lectures also. Estimation operates in EKF and the guidance and control operates in dynamic inversion, things like that. But nobody has, uh, has come up with a proof for that and the rigorous, uh, rigorous confidence for that actually. Okay. So, if you can take some of these problems and then come up with some ideas like that, uh, then that will be a, a kind of path breaking sort of results actually. Okay. Anyway, but coming back to this, so this separation principle was an idea of Kalman uh, and his co workers, and we tell okay, this th these two things can be done separately, okay, while doing one, other one we can ignore, but finally, we can operate the control based on this, and this operates on separation principle. So, what is the separation principle? Okay, this is uh, this is uh, the, this has various proofs actually. Separation theorem can be derived in various various ways, but a very quick way is uh, something uh, like this. We have the system dynamics. Okay, x dot is x plus p u plus z w. But remember, u is now minus k x hat, right? I mean, u is minus k x hat. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, what it is actually. So, if you put it back, uh, this uh, u is something like x equal to minus b k into x hat, okay, minus k x hat comes from here. Okay. All right. So, this my, uh, this term is because of u. Now, if you see these two quantities, okay, all right. Uh, if you see these two quantities, then this quantity when a x can be retained here and then this is something like uh, x hat I can represent as something like x minus x tilde. Okay. Right. 
because the okay x okay let write this one x minus x tilde okay is actually x height okay means uh, our original state remember it is estimated state plus error in the state okay so that is why this this gives us that actually okay all right so this one is put here bk into x minus x tilde and then you, this part a minus now you can see that this these two can be combined x is appearing here and here also so these two can be combined here like that the rest one is bk times x tilde here and zw here okay so the error dynamics in kernel filter i mean in the in a closed loop okay uh, right in error dynamics uh, well not in the kernel filter uh, but in the closed loop operation really uh, no no sorry the error dynamics in the kernel filter we have derived it like that okay if you see the derivation of kernel filter is something like x tilde dot is a minus k is into x tilde plus this time then remember we have to, we have got the solution for this and then consider this as something like a time varying input and uh, this convolution integral blah blah all these big derivations we had done before actually so essentially this is aerodynamics in the kernel filter okay so this is the system dynamics and this is the aerodynamics okay now the question is can we not see them together remember the aerodynamics contains the information of the filter dynamics also basically okay so as long as we which we prove that the system dynamics and error dynamics are separate then we are also done okay because one is dependent on other actually okay right so whether we whether you see that okay whether the the actual system dynamics okay or the estimated state dynamics okay that those things are separate or this is equivalently telling that uh, system dynamics and the error dynamics whatever i am saying x tilde dot if it is separate then x height also is separate because of this relationship anyway okay all right so to see that thing okay we put them together now have x dot and x tilde dot so x dot and x tilde dot okay now this this one this a minus b k times x a minus b k times x here plus b k times x tilde so b k times x tilde plus z w x external input something like this and x tilde dot happens to be a function of x tilde only and plus some external input okay and when we talk about stability of the system okay we typically don't worry about uh, the exogenous uh, input okay so this is this uh, time varying input to the system is ignored we want to worry about the system matrix only so this matrix actually okay so x dot and x tilde dot is this here uh, and this part operates like that okay so if you see the expected value of the error dynamics now because everything happened these are all random white noise and all that remember that okay so we can talk about this dynamics per se but remember these are zero mean white noise and all so if you take expected value of that okay this is nothing but expected value will come here because this is a constant matrix remember these are time uh, invariant uh, linear system lti system so this is this is a constant matrix actually so expected value will come directly here because the it's a linear operator okay so you take expected value of that this matrix time expected value of that plus this expected value of this quantity okay but this expected value of this quantity okay now you take uh, uh, i mean kind of uh, uh, i mean if you see that this is actually essentially zero mean white noise both w and v so if your expected value will go here and here and all these things will be zero so this is this is as if it is not there actually yeah, this quantity happens to be zero actually okay now if you take dy dt of uh, i mean this one this is remember these are dots actually so essentially it talks about uh, dy dt this is written as the same thing uh, x dot and x tilde dot so dy dt of that essentially happens to be like that because this component goes to zero actually okay now what happens is this to what happens to this dynamics at least in the expected value sense so to analyze that uh, we can have this uh, eigen value analysis and eigen value of this matrix is correct de determined by the characteristic uh, determinant actually okay so the characteristic equation is given by this this uh, de this matrix determinant si minus this matrix this whole determinant and that determinant uh, i mean it can now si is a, is a diagonal matrix remember that so in a smaller sense this i is different from this i dimension wise remember that This i is larger dimension, but this this i is smaller dimension. This is also smaller dimension actually. 
ok. But having said that uh, this small discrepancy then uh, this, this one can be written as something like this, but this is typically a diagonal matrix ok. So, part of that is put here, part of that is put here. Then this determinant is uh, if you take a partition matrix sort of thing and try to evaluate ok, this partition matrix sort of thing in a try to evaluate ok. Then this is nothing but the, the determinant uh, of this ok times the determinant of that minus 0 actually where this entire uh, sub matrix will become 0 because of that right. So, essentially talks about determinant of this is nothing but determinant of that into determinant of that. So, that is equal to 0 remember that we are we are constructing a characteristic equation to find out the eigen values. So, that has to go to 0 and essentially you can see now this is a scalar quantity and this is a scalar quantity. So, both are uh, det determinant a times b sort of thing it has to be equal to 0 that means either this is 0 or that is 0 ok. That means, if this is 0 these are eigen values of the controller and closed loop control plan. If you that is 0 this is eigen value of the aerodynamics actually ok. Now, the thing is the both controller and, uh, and observers are designed in a good way we have proven that uh, uh, also. So, the control is designed uh, the gain is designed in such a way that it results in a stable closed loop uh, system dynamics. So, that means, these eigen values are all in the left top plane and also same thing for the filter dynamics filter error goes to 0 ultimately. So, that means, uh, I mean expected value sense. So, that means, these eigen values are also good actually. And the combined eigen values it talk uh, all that the, this particular result shows us that the poles of the systems or the combined eigen values of the entire dynamics are nothing but the poles of the controller and poles of the filter because this this one will result in poles of the controller and this one result in pol poles of the filter ok. So, essentially the, the whole I mean the poles of this entire system consist of nothing but the poles of the controller and poles of the filter and hence the controller and filter can be designed separately actually ok. You, even if you consider this and that separately the, the combined system does not go bad actually ok. So, this is the separation theorem in, in LQG design. It is a big big achievement uh, because that gave lot of confidence to the people working on this domain that ok things can, can never go wrong ok if I, if I implement that way. Of course, provided both are both happen in the framework of a linear time invariant system. A small comment we have also seen and many people have implemented a uh, Kalman filter in, in a nonlinear framework because that is the way to implement uh, an EKF actually essentially. So, when if the controller happens to be in the linear framework, the, non, the, the, the estimator hap always happens to be in the nonlinear framework typically. And even controller even if you design in a in a linear setting for linear system setting, typically the implementation will talk about uh, uh, at least uh, some sort of uh, gain scheduling ok, gains will be interpolated that time varying actually. So, that sense it is also a nonlinear control design. And in that setup, uh, many success results have been reported. Uh, you don't have to doubt, or uh, I mean, you don't have to get afraid about that. But the fact of the matter is, something like separation theorem is not there. Okay, so it uh, just uh, bear that in mind actually. All right. Next, we'll see a small example to have a confidence uh, actually. So this is a short period control using LQZ LQZ design. This is one of the design, especially has been has been used extensively in aerospace industry also. Remember these these things can be computationally not taxing actually. All that you are talking is just solve two required equation, one filter required equation, one control required equation. And if it is it can be done offline, you have compute the gains uh, offline and this uh, control gain offline and, uh, and filter gain offline also and then try to interpolate online. So, these things are find heavy use in, in industry also basically including aerospace industry. So, one of the use is uh, how to kind of do gust elevation and that is that talks about short period control using LQZ design. And remember the short period is typically excited because of the gust and those of you who have flown in aircraft uh, might have repeatedly encountered this experience they call turbulence and all that. Uh, turbulence is there is uh, tighten up your seat belt and things like that they will tell. Because those are typically the things when there is some wind gust actually which will affect the dynamics little bit the aircraft will vibrate for a little small time and all that these are short period dynamics actually ok. So, pilot does not have to do anything the control uh, phenomena this autopilot design or uh, the way it is implemented in aircrafts will automatically take care of that actually. All right. So, how, how does it operate let us see a small example problem here this is F 16 longitude and dynamics and F 16 
is uh, longitudinal dynamics can be represent about some operating point can be designed that way. I mean, can be written that way. And the next dot is x plus b time delta e. The way to control that this uh, this longitudinal motion phenomenon is by deflecting appropriate delta e to suppress that noise. I mean, that uh, oscillatory behavior. So the dynamics that you consider is uh, alpha dot and q dot, right? Angle of attack rate and the pitch rate. And this angle of attack rate and pitch rate is strongly coupled with delta e uh, elevator deflection. And the dynamics happens to be about some operating point happens to be like this, where A and B matrix are given like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Now a G matrix is also kind of sim, I mean modulated. I mean it's kind of identified that way. So anytime there is a white noise, a sort of gust here coming. Actually, not need not necessarily be white noise. Any any noise that comes here that gets influenced, uh, and the system dynamics get influenced by this noise through this G matrix. Okay. At this point of time, it doesn't matter whether it is uh, white or not. Actually, essentially, I said this is a wind gust phenomenon, which is non-white also, basically by the way. Okay. So if the moment there is a noise, there is a noise influence matrix, and that X dot will be put out like that. The moment there is a control deflection, there is a con control influence matrix that will also alter X dot. So uh, if we compute this delta E properly, then this effect can be cancelled out actually. I mean, but also remember exact noise number and all will not be available. So knowing this so one idea is okay, why don't you directly cancel it algebraically? Simply not possible because this number is not available. Okay. Uh, so we have to estimate it. An estimation takes time, uh, a small amount of time at least, and then based on that we can have a control design to filter out this one. But before we do that, okay, this okay, by the alpha is angle of attack. Okay, so typically the angle between body axis and, and velocity vector in pitch plane, and then Q is pitch rate, delta is elevator deflection, W G is uh, vertical component of the wing gust actually. Okay, and those of you who uh, don't know, I still suggest that you go back to my flight dynamics lecture. It's part of this lecture, this course itself. Uh, some of the uh, early lectures in flight dynamics will will give you some definitions like this and all that actually. Or you can see a flight dynamics books also. Now what happens is this is in, this is as I told this wind gust is not white. So how do you handle that? Kalman filter only talks about white noise. So this is the way to handle is something like a, a Subsystem sort of thing, which will be model as uh, so this system dynamics and this output equation together, and essentially it comes through a transfer function realization. Actually, we have we have some sort of something like a transfer function, okay, okay, which uh, with this transfer function, okay, will take white noise. What happened here? Okay, this transfer function will take white noise, and it will give non-white noise. Okay, so this means this means uh, this will give W, uh, whereas your W G is wind gust really, and this W G is the one which will go and uh, and affect the system dynamics actually. Okay, remember this is W G gust component actually. Okay, so th this transfer function, if you realize through a system, uh, I mean state space realization, it turns out to be like that, and because it is a filter dynamics pro filtering problem. Or estimation problem. Uh, this uh, observable canonical form is the one which is recommended here. Okay. The, remember, there are various forms of realizing a transfer function. That's not unique. In other words, if you know a state equation, uh, realizing a transfer function is unique. But whereas, if you know a transfer function, realizing that in a state uh, state space is not unique. That various ways exist, and because it is a it's a estimation problem. Uh, the recommendation is you realize that in con uh, an observable canonical form. So you do that, and then this AW and VW all that will come into picture. So now what to tell is okay. I have got a system dynamics, okay, but there is a wind gust dynamics, uh, which is represented as this this system dynamics. So I'll put them together now. X dot comes from here, and and the Z dot comes from this part of the story, and then I'll put them together here. Now what happens? This W what you are talking here or here. Is essentially a white noise. That means we can apply Kalman filter to this this system dynamics, not to this system dynamics, okay, because this is not a white noise. So this way of doing things is something called shaping filter and all that, and uh, that is uh, that is what this uh, this transfer function will be identified for this particular purpose to model the wind gust phenomenon. This modeling is something like if you take a white noise, 
pass it through this model, it will give you that particular noise which is uh, which is physically happening basically. Okay, so that is uh, that is uh, what is called a sapping filter radio and all that actually. Okay. And also after getting this delta E, it has also passed through some sort of actuator dynamics and actuator dynamics for control uh, I mean this elevator deflection is a first order system with this transfer function actually. Okay. All right, so this is what it is, uh, then uh, ultimately this realization of that uh, can be done separately or together, the both ways of doing that and if you do hard coupling sort of thing that also will come into picture, okay. this can be realized as a first order uh, state space equation. And then you directly put into this here and tell okay, I have got two system dynamics alpha dot q dot. Then these are the Queen Gauss dynamics realization, this part will come here and delta E dot is my actuator dynamics, I will put it there also. So, I will directly comma directly compute the input to the actuator okay, through this uh, phi state formulation actually. Okay. So, even though it started with two states, eventually we, re, it, uh, we landed up with some sort of uh, six states actually. Okay. Sometimes again I repeat sometimes this is not preferable, you just put it as four states because this will also talk about a realization of actuator state now, okay, this delta E if you put it this way. Okay. Now for real for actuator states realization we also need a sensor for that and some actuators are equipped and especially aircraft equipped actuator if you talk about it is there, I mean uh, delta e information is available. But sometimes when it is not available you, uh, you cannot recover that uh, from other states obviously. So, it is not a good idea to put it that way, okay. but in this particular case uh, because, because it is F16 which is uh, I mean heavily equipped and expensive also and things like that. So, since the actuators are capable of giving us the information about uh, the actual delta E basically, so that is available, so we can put it that way. Okay. All right, now what are the measured outputs in this particular case we are assuming, uh, we are not as really assuming this, this uh, delta E sort of thing, but what you are telling is we have our aircraft is equipped with sufficient uh, sensors in uh, measuring two quantities only and these two quantities are nothing but uh, normal acceleration and pitch rate. Okay. So, the normal acceleration and pitch rate uh, this is assumed uh, this uh, gyroscope will give uh, this accelerometer will give us normal acceleration and this pitch rate will be given from the gyroscope actually. Okay. So, these two values are these two out sensor outputs are available with us and this can be represented like this. Okay. And normal acceleration remember has to be represented in the form of alpha and q that, that remember that uh, output equation should be a function of states only. So, n z is uh, this is the model part of it, it is a, a function of alpha and q this way. Okay. So, using these numbers now and I, I also strongly suggest that you repeat this exercise yourself, you do your own MATLAB coding or coding through Simulink or whatever it is actually and you generate the, generate the results of this way, this will give you a lot of confidence actually. Okay. So, NZ uh, is, is given like this, then the measurement noise covariance is something like this, R is uh, designed that way and Q is uh, sigma square you can like 25, all right. So, the controller design is based on LQR control design obviously, and this talks about that. So, U the, the uh, U is what, U is the input to the actuator, remember that U, okay. this U comes from uh, since uh, kind of uh, realizing this transfer function in a state space. So, the input to the actuator okay, is directly computed through this augmented state information and this for this you need a uh, control of uh, this Riccardi matrix PLQ or PLQ is computed through the uh, controller Riccardi matrix thing sort of uh, solution basically. So you, so, you solve the controller Riccardi matrix, put it back here for the gain design and you are ready with the LQR controller. What about the filter? Filter operates uh, through this, this dynamics, so you have this state equation, this uh, output equation and then you have this, uh, this is now a white noise because of the gust modeling and this is also a white noise sensor output actually. So, but now you can uh, fill, uh, you can use filter, uh, I mean say Kalman filter and then controller can be computed this way on the way. Now, what are the results? Results you can see very good, uh, alpha is getting suppressed uh, and then uh, re remember 20 seconds is not a very bad time if you 15 seconds really, 15, 20 seconds, not a very bad time as far as uh, aircraft equations are concerned, especially uh, if you are really concerned about commercial aircraft and all it does not matter that much and fighter aircraft performance is more. The, so, even if there is a, I mean importance for performance is more, so even if it takes a little longer time to suppress this gust phenomenon, it is still tolerable actually. Okay. Now, this is alpha series and this is Q 
and remember alpha is one order smoother than q okay if you think about this uh, this dynamics of uh, alpha dot and q dot okay if you see this equation alpha dot is a angle that uh, talks about uh, angle between two velocity vector components actually okay so the, and then q is directly the pitch rate so pitch rate is more sensitive to the gust actually it will uh, so alpha is one order smoother than that that effect is also visible here q is also going to zero but there is a small residual error it's very negligible residual error the structural uh, kind of damping and all that will take care of that structural aerodynamic damping will not let you have this actually so don't worry about this small chattering here it's not in reality it will not happen actually but even if you see the on the on the way there are uh, there are these uh, small residual errors which will which are smoothened out in the alpha level actually whatever control in time we are not chattering at all control will uh, nicely operate on the estimated state and estimated states are these two and control will be operating like this so with this control application of this control will be able to take alpha and q both to zero actually just the message so this lqz design is kind of a popular technique to do this kind of uh, control design actually but there are problems of lqz design also okay what problem main problem is loss of loss of robustness of lqr remember if you have the full state information in the lqr design uh, at that point of time in those like that lecture we also i also told that uh, that typically if full state information is uh, available error free then lqr has good robustness that means you have uh, as good as something like uh, infinity gain margin and up to 60 degree phase margin also basically but all these things are gone the moment you put a lqz design lqz doesn't guarantee that basically now the whole idea is can you do some modification of this uh, this gain computation k and uh, and also the control uh, say the filter gave, i mean kalman gain ke somehow the core point was down there actually okay so in if you blindly select these numbers like diagonal and then uh, work with that some time domain phenomenon like that then uh, the then uh, this robustness considerations are ignored actually so we have to go to the frequency response characteristics and from there you have to propose a design kind of tuning uh, basket sort of thing you cannot uh, tune wherever you want to but it will allow you some sort of a basket from which you can pick up your tuning values actually so that is called loop transfer recovery okay so that idea is called loop transfer recovery and lqz when somebody designs lqz ltr cannot be ignored you have to kind of either incorporate uh, in the control design gain selection process directly or at least you have to test your selection whatever matrix q and r you have selected whether it passes through the lqr test conditions uh, ltr test conditions or not actually so if it passes through and you are happy with and all that and then lqz ltr is is kind of a good design actually okay then there are other ideas also then uh, just remember that lqz ltr all all everything operates based on two phenomena one is white noise the other one is expected value okay everything happens in the sense of expected value that average value actually okay average value doesn't give us uh, good confidence because momentarily some some noise can be very high and then uh, system can go unstable and things like that some for example surge protection sort of ideas when when you talk about electrical circuits there when there are surges and that point of time the entire circuit breaks down actually okay so that that kind of consideration that those kind of problems motivated the idea of something like hs infinity design that means you expect the maximum uh, noise and then try to have your uh, design uh, kind of safe for the maximum noise input actually okay so i'll not uh, talk too much on that those are subjects of uh, robust control course and all actually but uh, sometimes h2 h infinity all that are also called as uh, optimal control extensions ideas actually but uh, those are in different ball game altogether so uh, typically taught in a in a robust control course actually so let me not talk too much on that any anybody interested in that you can also read some of this robust control book actually and one of the very readable book is probably a book from mesijowski okay, who was a professor in think in oxford university uk basically all right so that is uh, that is that part of the story basically so lq lqr and then kalman filters leads to lqz and lqz has a little robustness problem so we kind of bring up bring in this concept of ltr which are, which gives us a way of selecting this q and r matrices and all that which will give us some sort of robustness back actually so lqz ltr turns out to be a good practical design approach actually really. yeah. all right so this part of the story here and then let's move on to the next topic of this lecture the next topic is uh, 
is neighboring optimal control ok. So, it is a kind of related to LQR, but uh, not I mean we are hunting out for a neighboring optimal solution in true sense actually ok. So, we are not interested in deviation killing per se, but we are talking about some finding out a neighboring optimal solution actually. Just to summarize again, it will be to have a performance index in general. Remember, these are we are back to the nonlinear domain. So, these are all happens in nonlinear framework now. So, the optimal uh, I mean the performance index to optimize is uh, some some terminal penalty and some path penalty sort of thing. Then there is a path constraint, okay. then there are boundary conditions, and then we have this this augmented performance index which talks about this kind of thing. Okay. So, remember there are there are at final time not only there is a soft constraint, but there is a hard constraint set of equations also ok. So, not only this has to be minimized ok this function whatever typically quadratic and things like that, but this constraint should also be met and that too in a partial set it cannot be full state all the states and all that. The dimension of the equation can be different from the number of states actually ok. So, this can be q equation sort of thing. So, one idea is ok you have this augmented performance index uh, phi of x and then this uh, new transpose this lock variable new this one is brought in here new transpose psi this this operates in the in the penalty part of it here and then this state equation which operates throughout the trajectory happens and uh, happens to latch on to that and this this turns out to be like that. Now, the Hamiltonian is a function something like that and you derive all these necessary conditions x dot is uh, del s by del lambda again f of x u then uh, co-state equation, then optimal control equation, boundary condition. Then the, the boundary condition remember will come from this this full term. So, it is not uh, only this term, but lambda f is this term plus that term ok. So, that is the also do not uh, forget that actually. Now, here is a problem definition like this what you are interested in. First, you are assuming that we have uh, determined a control solution u t satisfying all necessary conditions and then we have this uh, now let us consider something like a small perturbation in the external path produced by small perturbation in the initial state somehow uh, either because of gust or some I mean something that we did not understand in the process somehow it resulted in some sort of a delta x naught and from there onwards we want to find out a different path actually which is close which is optimal. Ok, so this was uh, this uh, so what happened is uh, there was some small perturbation ok that produced a small perturbation in the initial state and a terminal condition d psi also ok whatever you are talking here. Now, the question is uh, something like this under what condition u t is guaranteed to be local optimum first of all and then if it is there then can you find a neighboring optimal solution in an efficient manner. Well, you can always think that as a new problem ok after this perturbation happens and try to go back and resolve your 2.1 really problem and then solve a new path actually. So, that is not an option here. Can we really do a little more efficient way because we already have a closely uh, we already have optimal path close to close to it. So, can we do a better job can we can we find out a little more efficient manner. And then the third question under what condition such a neighboring solution not exist actually ok. So, there is a, another issue there. So, the detailed derivation can be found in Bryson and Bo book uh, here we are interested in uh, delta square j bar the second order variation actually ok. So, first of all you note that the available control solution satisfies all the necessary conditions of optimality that makes that means first variation is 0 that is already there. What you are interested in making sure that the second variation is also minimized and all that actually. So, you are interested in delta del square j bar del square j bar and del square j bar can be derived something like this and remember these are all Bryson and notation sort of thing now. So, this phi x x transfer del square phi by del x square ok. Similarly, this del h u x transfer del square h by del u del x like that okay. So, this is the performance index so, with respect to the perturbed equation dynamics or so system dynamics which can be given like this ok. So, this is the system dynamic I mean uh, the cost function and this is the perturbed uh, state equation actually ok. Similarly, the derivation in the boundary condition or the sorry the deviation in the boundary condition can also be written something like this actually ok. Delta x naught is specified and delta psi is also specified because we know that the, the perturbation that happened we know actually. So, that is available okay. So, essentially the problem happens to be a linear quadratic regulator problem ok, but with cross product term also basically ok. This term these are there ok, this cross product terms will appear actually 
All right. So the state equation is like this, and the co-state equation can be something like this. Okay. With respect to this cost function, remember that. Okay. You have to derive all that. So delta lambda dot uh, turns out to be like that. Optimal control equation turns out to be like that, and boundary condition like this actually. Okay. Again, I suggest that you derive this yourself in in pen and paper. So you'll have a lot more understanding actually. Then optimal control equation is given like this, and the co-state equation is given like this. state and co-state together can be given like this, where A, B, C can be derived from this this conditions to be like this actually. Okay, because now do you remember B is a square matrix, and B transpose uh, happens to be B. Okay, if you talk reverse transpose and all that, so this is a symmetric square matrix sort of thing actually. Okay. So what you are doing is seek a solution for delta lambda and delta psi because that's what is unknown here. So delta lambda and delta psi in the form like this. Now remember the whole idea of LQR is we seek a solution lambda as a function of x, a lambda equal to p times x. Similarly, like that we have to seek a solution as delta lambda as a, as a function of delta x and delta nu also. Okay. So this one uh, we seek a solution like this and like that. Okay. And then you can talk about this boundary conditions, impose uh, position, and all delta lambda f and, uh, and delta psi f uh, can be represented like this actually. Okay, directly can be derived from that, and you can put it that way. Okay. So this essentially gives us the final. Suppose you you kind of uh, compare these two guys because this is from assumption and this is from what you have derived and all that actually. Okay, so, like that. We put them together. This tells us that there is a delta x f component. There is a delta x f component. So P A T F has to be this component at time at time tf because uh, the all variations can be cannot be zero and all that so then similarly rtf has to be like this and uh, this is same so we don't worry about that but qtf happens to be zero there is no delta nu here okay. so that happens to be zero so the three boundary conditions are known to us now what about the uh, differential equations so you go back and see the delta lambda dot and uh, and things like that exactly similar to what we have done in lqr setting derivation sort of thing and if you follow the similar steps, it turns out that this equation will it will result. And because the variations cannot go to zero and all, we'll have two equations: one the same or very similar to the required equation that you already knew before. Then there is an additional differential equation like this. Okay, so this will all result in. Okay, if you put it back, uh, all the things that we know, this will result in. Okay, not sorry. This this is this is two equations. Okay, then the other equation, if you analyze, uh, I mean this this equation, delta x dot and all that actually, will also result in some sort of uh, equation like this. And these two equations, if you analyze together, okay, then this will result in this equation. Remember this this I mean r dot coming out of here and r dot coming out of here will be same actually. So we have this p dot, r dot, and q dot, and p t f, r t f, and q t f are given known to us actually. So these three differential equations and three final boundary conditions. Again, the idea is to propagate it backwards and then store it and use it and something like that. Then we are ready now with the solution. And finally, d nu can be computed as any as initial condition value inverse sort of thing. And then d lambda zero can be computed that way. Okay. And also there is a small point to note here that q t not okay should not be singular. And if it happens to be singular, then the This optimization problem is said to be abnormal. Something wrong here actually. Okay. The problem is formulated well, then Q T not will not become singular actually. Okay. All right. So with that assumption, then you can follow and formulate uh, delta lambda zero, and then d nu also you can calculate, and finally d u can be represented all this like that, and ultimately it will result in k one times delta x and k two times delta t. Okay. So k two k two of t times uh, delta psi. So that means delta u is a function of delta x and delta psi basically. That's and that's what is our objective basically, right? We wanted to compute that uh, delta u uh, so that we can add it to the the nominal u that is available and we can go ahead actually. Okay. So in many problems, it turns out that this is not critical. This is just a comment, a simplified way of implementing and all that. So it turns out that this is not critical and hence is not as uh, imposed. And you assume that this is also positive semi-definite matrix and things like that. So delta square z becomes like that. So essentially, it happens to be a, a LQR problem in cross product term, which you know how to how get the solution. So if this constraint is relaxed, okay, this all this exercise what you did is not really required in a way, because we know how to solve this cross product uh, cost function, and then we go ahead and solve it actually. 
okay and especially also remember that uh, that T f has to go to infinity I mean that uh, when T f goes to infinity this will not be there okay, that becomes even more simplified actually okay anyway furthermore uh, this is what T f goes to infinity and things like that you can artificially increase the weights and do some engineering solution instead of going through all these mathematical things and all that okay and you can also think about solving the algebraic Ricard equation online essentially it goes to this SDRE formulation which you have discussed before as well actually. Okay. Now, before ending this lecture, we will just uh, touch upon this uh, this idea of sufficiency condition and we have been uh, kind of must have been kind of curious enough uh, because all the way we have been talking about necessary conditions things like that, but what about sufficiency condition and also remember the sufficiency conditions are also for local optimum only, we are not talking about global at all here. But still, the, what are the necessary, what are I mean, what are the sufficiency conditions after the necessary conditions are satisfied? So, there are two just a very quick summary, there are two, two ways of doing things, uh, one is uh, in weak sense, other in strong sense. When somebody talks about weak sense, uh, we talk about uh, variations of delta x and delta x dot, uh, both are small, and in strong sense, only delta x is small where delta x dot can be large. Okay. So, if even if that can be guaranteed then that is called strong sense and if both happens to be small and still you guarantee in the optimality that is called weak sense. Okay. So, we we talk a little bit summary of the weak sense, strong sense I will leave it to self reading actually. Okay. So, the theorem 1 tells something like that existence of neighboring optimum path, uh, it, uh, this is the conditions. The neighboring optimum path, optimum path exists in weak sense okay, from T0 to T f if the following conditions are satisfied that the second derivative of Hamiltonian with respect to u del square uh, h by del u square that is guaranteed to be positive definite matrix all the time that is called convexity condition. And then q has to be a negative definite matrix okay, that is called normality condition and this q remember is not the design q and all we have actually come up with the, the q inverse and all this this particular q. Okay. So, that that q dot uh, the solution of that this final condition and this differential equation whatever turns out that is q of t actually okay. and that q of t uh, has to has to be negative definite matrix that is called normality condition. And then this one this matrix if what you see p of t minus r q inverse r transpose has to be a finite it cannot be infinity actually that is called Jacobi condition. So, if the convexity condition normality and Jacobi conditions are satisfied. Okay. Then you call the then it is then it guarantees that the neighboring optimum path exists actually. Okay, and essentially the condition three, the Jacobi condition, also talks about there is no conjugate point on the optimal path. Now conjugate point is something uh, very, okay, very simply uh, simplistic sense. If somebody wants to understand something like this problem, you have something like a let's say you talk about uh, a sphere, okay, something like this kind of a sphere, okay, and let's say you start from point A to point B, okay like uh, something like that actually and then probably you go to kind of north minimum path from, from, from point A to point B via north pole and all that actually. Okay. Something like okay. now at, at north pole okay, you, you something like uh, I mean wherever you go in this direction okay, it turns out to be the equal distance actually right if you talk about a minimum length path sort of thing. So, that means uh, there is uh, no clarity of which direction to go after north pole actually. Okay. There are several ideas there, uh, several paths, infinity number of paths really, where you can go to the same distance and blend up with the same uh, same value actually of the distance traveled. So, that is the kind of a conjugate point and this Jacobi condition tells that there cannot be a conjugate point on the way actually. Okay. All right, so that is what it is and the theorem 2 tells us a very simple way of extension of that really, okay, which tells us that uh, okay, sufficiency condition is nothing but conditions of theorem 1 actually. Okay. If the conditions in theorem 1 along with the necessary conditions also because sufficiency conditions do not mean uh, too much without necessary condition. So, we have necessary condition as well as sufficiency conditions then it uh, kind of uh, guarantees some sort of uh, sufficiency condition for the entire problem actually. Okay. That means, conditions on theorem 1 these 1, 2, 3 conditions as well as the necessary conditions form a set of sufficiency conditions for a trajectory to be local minimum actually. Okay. So, more and more details and then more extension you can see some Bryson and book and then followed up with uh, some mathematical optimal control books and all that to, to get more ideas on that. 
will not talk because this is typically a kind of engineering flavor even though we talk uh, to uh, sometimes uh, theoretical details and all. We will not go to this mathematical optimal control analysis tools too much. So, here I will not venture out to this uh, further ideas uh, and things like that. I will like uh, in, in strong sense and all if somebody is very curious to see and things like that, you can always refer to version and other books actually. So, that is what I thought on the way it is good to have some idea about uh, neighboring optimal control and sufficiency condition things like that. So, kind of summarize it, but again they are not uh, extensive at all. Any, anybody interested can see especially Bison and who to start with and, and then we will learn on that actually. All right, so this is what I wanted to cover in this lecture, but uh, just before that uh, again let me summarize that this particular book is a very seminal book. You can see many of the things from this version and other things are also there, especially Stengel book is very readable. You can read many things and understand what is going on actually. And this is frequency domain concepts, uh, something like LQZ, LTR, LTR concepts and all if you are more curious you can see this book actually. All right, so with that comment uh, let me stop here for this lecture, thank you.